Hello everybody, I am Diamond the Hedgehog, and uh, today I would like to talk about two games that were announced, not recently, more like, like two months ago, maybe a month ago, I can't remember, but the point is it was announced, announced in a fairly re decently recent time, and uh, I just want to talk about them. And those two games are Persona 5 The Royal and Persona 5 Scramble. So if you have been living under a rock or you're just not into the Persona series and you somehow haven't heard of these two games, they were games that were you know, uh, announced by Atlas. And even though they both go under the Persona 5 title, they are both they are two very different games. So Persona 5 The Royal or P5R um, it's basically, it's sort of like the Persona 4 Golden for Persona 5. It is a re-release that will be coming out uh, later this year in Japan and then in 2020 in America. And it's basically just a re-release re of Persona 5 with extra content and reworked story, all that jazz. You know? Meanwhile, Persona 5 Scramble is... It's a sort of like Dynasty Warriors meets Persona 5, and yeah, that's that's pretty much all, all, it, all it is, from what we can tell anyways. So, Persona 5 Scramble. I I've heard a lot of people uh, angry at this, not because it's Persona meets Dynasty Warriors, because, you know, I'm pretty sure, you know, myself included, I'm pretty sure most people think that's a cool idea. It's just that, because a lot of people ha were hoping for it to be uh, Persona 5 for the Switch, which, you know, I, I still think would be cool, a lot of people assumed that that's what it was, a lot of people assumed that was what it was going to be, and were disappointed to find out that it is not Persona 5 for the Nintendo Switch. I mean, I mean it's on the Nintendo Switch, but it's not Persona 5, it's a spin-off game. However, I was always up, even back when it was just called P5S and we knew nothing about it, I always sort of figured it wasn't going to be Persona 5 for the Switch, and the reason for that being, well, okay, let's look at it, look back in, looking back at every single Persona game up to that point, every mainline Persona game, I mean, uh, all the way back from Persona 1, all the way through Persona 5 and the remakes, all of them have been on PlayStation consoles exclusively. The original was on PlayStation 1, re-released on the PlayStation on the PSP. Second was on the PlayStation 2, re-released on PSP. Third one was was on the PlayStation 2 twice and then re-released on PSP. And then Persona 4 was released on the PlayStation 2 and then re-released on the PlayStation Vita. And then of course Persona 5 was exclusive to the PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 3. So, why would Persona 5 end up being the one that they start bringing to other consoles? Now, granted, Persona 5 is also the game that sort of boosted the Persona series out of being very niche and uh, small, but and not to mention that Joker's appearance in Smash allowed for the, you know, it sort of paved the way for that idea, but I, I, I honestly didn't expect it. I, I don't expect that any time in the near future that there's going to be a mainline Persona game that is on anything else but the PlayStation. Now, does that mean I don't want there to be a mainline Persona game on other consoles? No, absolutely. I think that would be great. In fact, like I said earlier, I think Persona 5 on the Switch would be awesome. But looking at it realistically, it's not gonna happen. But, you know, looking past all that, Persona 3... Er, but looking past all that, Persona 5 Scramble, it's it is looking to be pretty decent at the very least. You know, I'm not personally a big fan of the Dynasty Warriors uh, series. Uh, that doesn't mean I don't enjoy the games. They're they're just you know not my favorite. But you know, maybe this will be different. Am I just wishful thinking? Possibly. But you know, I mean. I mean, most Persona spin-off games usually don't have that great of a story, from what I've heard. So I'm guessing. So I'm guessing that 
per that this isn't going to be any different but that doesn't mean that the gameplay can't be fun so uh you know it's really too early to say anything so i'll just yeah so on to what everybody really cares about that being p5r persona 5 the royal as i mentioned before p5r is a complete re-release of persona 5 that features new locations a, a new palace or new palaces potentially who knows uh new characters including a brand new phantom thief uh kasumi i believe her name was and just new confidants just more stuff now i just want to get this out of the way before i continue on with this persona 5 is my favorite game of all time like that's not that's not an exaggeration uh persona 5 i just i love that game to bits i it's just so good i love the story i love the characters the gameplay is fun like i was afraid i wasn't going to be able to get into it because it was a jrpg and i generally have trouble with those but it's it's fun i like it i enjoyed it it was frustrating at parts uh you know the whole uh, Haru's introduction, that part was super rushed, and, you know, that's a bit annoying. But, um, you know, obviously the game's not perfect, like I just said, but it, it's it's amazing. I love it. And the fact that it's possible that I'm going to get Persona 5, but better, I, my mind can't take it. <laughs> However... You know, it being, Persona 5 being my favorite game, I can't help but be a little skeptical about a few things. Uh, okay, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and drop a spoiler warning here for Persona 5. Uh, I'm not per specifically going to be talking about anything, like, spoilery, I think. But, like, I will be, you know, I will be just talking, and I won't really be caring about, like, trying to prevent spoilers, so, uh... Just, just be aware of that. So, firstly, I just want to say that what we have seen of the game looks awesome. I mean, there's these new animations, these new in, these, in the trailers that look freaking fantastic. Uh, it, they just look so good, and I hope it's not like a case. And I, I'm really hoping it's not a case of just like making it different so for the sake of the trailer. And then the game is just gonna, and then the actual game is gonna look crap by comparison. Because a lot of games do that, and I hate that. <laughs> like I understand why they do it, but I really hope this isn't one of those cases. You know, there's a lot of you know circulation about this new handsome guy that you know is apparently a new confidant in the game that many are theorizing could potentially be the human form of uh, Morgana. Um. And now if you now if you've played Persona 5, you know that Morgana isn't actually a human. He was, you know, created to sort of uh, bump out the evil Igor that had taken out that had or taken over the um, that had taken over the Velvet Room. And you know, he that's that was that's what Morgana was. He's not actually a human, but you know, he thought he was a human. So um my, my theory for how this is going to go is that, you know, after the main story is all, you know, said and done, and, you know, you know once all of the bad guys are defeated and Mementos is destroyed and whatever, uh, my guess is that, like, a uh, god, the god guy, I forgot his name, he's gonna come down and be like, thank you, Morgana, for, uh, offering, for being such a good guy and doing the good stuff for the world that we set you out to do, so now here's your greatest wish to become a real boy. Uh, that, that's my theory for what's gonna happen. Um, uh, that's, that's, again, that's assuming that this guy is even Morgana in the first place. He does look like Morgana, but it's entirely possible that it's a coincidence, or maybe even just a straight-up red herring, like intentionally made to look like Morgana, but you know, when we actually play the game, it won't be. Not to mention, there was this footage of a new palace, and it showed Joker using, like, this, like, grapple, like, Spider-Man grapple thing. Um, and it looked, like, I, I think that looked really cool. Like, the set pieces in Persona 5 are already, like, just really cool and stylish. 
And if we're getting like a grapple hook now, and we can be cool looking like a Spider-Man Phantom Thief, and now that would be that would be really cool. I, I I am excited for that. Now, it's the new girl, Kasumi. She's the one that I'm starting that I feel skeptical about mostly, and so I've heard rumors. Uh, they're not confirmed. I should say that I've heard rumors that Kasumi is actually going to be uh, the first one recruited into the group other than Joker and she's actually going to be there before um, before Ryuji um, and not only that but apparently her confidant card because they ran out of the major arcana it's going to be like this made up one I, I forget the French name but it's translates into English as the fates and that's not, and that's not, um, that's not a, uh, that's, that's not a tarot card. It's not. And then there's her persona, uh, which I can't, again, I can't remember the, the name that they, it's given, but it translates into English as base, as Cinderella. And so if you don't know, in Persona 5, like, all the, all the, um, all of the, uh, Personas, aside from Loki, are named after like criminals. Like uh, Arsene is named after you know Arsene Lupin, the gentleman thief. Uh, no, Captain Captain Kidd is named after the pirate William Kidd. No, uh, you know, Carmen is named after the seductress from the Spanish opera. Uh, you know, etc. etc. Uh, as far as I know, Loki is the only like persona that isn't based on a criminal. But even then, you can still you know kind of squeeze that in and make it. Not, not to mention he's a catchy's you know true persona. So yeah. Cinderella isn't a criminal. Like like all she did, like the most criminal thing she did is disobeyed her stepmother. And this isn't just like a Disneyfication on it either like even in the original like brothers grim fairy tale it, she still didn't do anything criminal i mean all she did was just you know wear a pretty dress and go to a ball that her mom said no to going to so i don't understand why <laughs> and, and also another problem i'm seeing here is that kasumi kind of her phantom thief outfit it kind of looks a bit too similar to Joker, almost like it would, almost like it's sort of a, almost like she's supposed to be like a female version of Joker. And you know, if if it was like Persona 3 Portable, where it's two different protagonists and Kasumi was like a separate story where you play as her instead of Joker, then I, that that I would be okay with, you know, except for the you know, whole uh, Cinderella thing. But like. She's a, an entirely separate character. She's a confidant, like I just mentioned. She's a separate character. And, okay, basically what I'm trying to say is she feels a bit like an OC do not steal. She she feels, she so far from what I've seen, she feels very much like someone who, like, like a character from a fan fiction that some teenage girl wrote, like, uh... Uh, me, ex, uh, Joker, <laughs> love, you know, dirty, you know, Ryuji, ex, Yusuke, you know, that, that sort of thing. And that's definitely what it feels like. And, like, <sighs> I'm very skeptical because even if that, like, it's going to be, if they do this wrong, it very well could feel like that. I mean, I haven't played any of the uh, previous Persona games, or any of the their or any of their remakes, so I don't know if it's ever been a thing where they added a where they added a main character into one of the remakes. I don't know if that's ever been a thing before, but you know, I'm ass uh, uh, assuming that it's you know a, a, a but assuming that it's something that this game is doing first then I'm a little worried because if they do it wrong, Kasumi could very well just feel like a straight up uh, 
my OC, do not steal, um, you know, Mary Sue character. And I've written a lot of fan fictions in my time. Uh, I know my handsome appearance and uh, totally non-existent neck beard uh, may, would make you think otherwise. But yeah, I've written fanfic in my life with many uh, terrible OCs, so I sort of know what it's like. And I I'm afraid that that's going to be what it is. Uh, now, one thing that I'm hoping actually happens is that they're intentionally trying to, like, again, a red herring, trying to make us think that, you know, OC do not steal Mary Sue character. But what if she becomes the traitor in this version of the story? And I know that seems to come out of nowhere, but I remember the first time during the first announcement trailer for Persona 5R, it, it, the very first thing is it had a female voice saying, that she hated the Phantom Thieves. And so I'm thinking, uh, what if that's Kasumi? Now, I haven't actually gone back and listened to the voice, so I don't know if it's you know, similar to Kasumi's voice at all, but you know, what if it is? What if it is Kasumi saying that? And what if her adventures you know, in the Phantom Thieves is all just a big red herring so that she ends up being the traitor and, you know, this means that Akechi who a lot of people love, for some reason, uh, can get a redemption arc. And if that's the route they went down, I would love that. It's beautiful. Awesome. It is awesome. But, you know, I can't say for certain... Uh, I can't say for certain that she'll feel like a Mary Sue character. Uh, even, in, you know, going back to what I said, you know, the f you know, me hearing that she might become the first Phantom Thief rec recruited even before Ryuji, you know, that could be a lie. That could be a complete rumor, and it's not true at all. So, again, there's a lot of speculation going on here, mainly because we don't actually know very much about, you know, Kazumi, other than what is on the surface level. And I just want to make this perfectly clear. I'm not... When I'm saying these things, I'm not saying... I'm not against change. I am... I, I, I like to think that I'm a very open-minded person in that aspect. I'm very okay with change, like, you know, uh, you know, back, you know, uh, back when Equestria Girls first came out, a lot of people were like, oh, this is, you know, not ponies, they're humans, but, you know, I was okay with it. I thought the movie was pretty okay. Heck, I, I, I really enjoyed the second movie, so, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm perfectly okay with change. Sometimes change can be for the better. It can be sometimes for the worse, but sometimes it can be for the better. Another thing I'm somewhat worried about is, you know, the whole introduction of new palaces in general. Like, I mentioned the whole, you know, grapple thing in a new palace, and it looks cool. I said it looks cool, and I still believe it looks cool. But, mm, one thing I'm worried about is that the seven palaces plus mementos are meant to represent... If you, if you haven't realized it, the seven... The, the, the first seven palaces you go in all represent one of the seven deadly sins. And then the, the final palace, Mementos itself, represents hell. And I'm worried that adding more palaces into that is sort of going to muddy up that whole uh, theme in it. Uh, now, if, if it is just the one extra palace, I'm, they can still make it work by having, it be ba having the palaces be based around the nine circles of hell. Uh, and if they do, and if that's what they do, Okay, brilliant. Again, brilliant. But again, I'm, I'm, I'm worried I'm worried that some of these new changes are going to go against some of the themes of the original game. Because, yeah, again, I love Persona 5. It's my favorite game of all time. Uh, only to be rivaled by things like uh, uh, the Danganronpa games. And Persona 5 is just awesome. I love it. And I'm just worried that these things that they're adding are going to make the game worse rather than better. However, I am open-minded. And I'm not going to go into this game expecting it to be bad. I'm going to expect that it's going to be just as good, if not better, than Persona 5. And that's the way I'm going. I'm still going to get this game. Uh, if not right away, then eventually, because, you know, I'm a high schooler who doesn't have money, so I can't exactly, you know, buy the game myself, but, you know, I have a birthday and Christmas, so maybe I'll get it for those. 
Maybe not Persona 5 for Christmas, why not be Persona 5R? But yeah, TLDR version. Persona 5 Scramble looks like it can be pretty decent, and if not, it's not really going to affect anything. But Persona 5 Royal looks like it can be also really good, and just as great as the original, or if not better. But, you know, I just, you know, it can also be worse. I'm not going to hold my breath, but, yeah, I don't know. I'm very, I'm very, I have, a, I'm, I'm very mixed on uh, Persona 5 The Royal. I am hoping it's going to be good, though. So, those are my basic thoughts. Uh, tell me what you think of the two games that are coming out in the description below. Or in the comments below. I don't know why I keep saying description. Tell me what you think in the comments, and I will see you guys next time. And those two games are Perfo Perfona? Perfona.